create a perfect world in our heads. There may be only minutes, seconds left of someone's life. Why waste time? Well, let me ask you something. You want it all, don't you? one thing they all need money now let's see if they're brave enough to earn it welcome back everyone to another episode of resourceful agent radio show i'm your host andy silvius and today's guest is matt tiefke did i say that correct tiefke. 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 but yeah tiefke. right on man Hey, uh, so Matt is the owner of Typekey Property Management and Edge Realty Partners. So thank you for being here today. I really appreciate it. Yeah, man. So I, I'm not the owner of Edge. I used to work there, uh, commercial brokerage in Austin. Okay. Uh, but I'm, it's a pleasure to be here, man. Happy to, to dive into anything and, and uh, appreciate you having me on. Yeah, absolutely. So you're in real estate, though. Don't you own your, do you own your team or is it a brokerage you guys own? Yeah, a lot of moving parts. So I, uh, I own a real estate brokerage. Uh, we have 45 agents. I own a uh, property management company. And then I also own a uh, construction and remodeling company. So three different businesses. That's awesome. How did you get into all of that? Hustling, man. Uh, yeah. Work, been doing this since I was 17 and um, just always looking for new opportunities. It's really entrepreneurial. I uh, found a lot of good partners. So I don't own 100% of any of these businesses. Mm-hmm. I have uh, 50% of the real estate brokerage, 30% of the property management company, and then 30% of the uh, construction remodeling company. And just found good partners, uh, kind of set things up where we can divide and conquer. And then my role really is to just help uh, grow. So I focus on growth. And then um, on the other side of it, we're just always looking to buy real estate. Okay. Awesome, man. So most people would ask running that many businesses, are you, uh, are you running around just a hundred percent of the time or do you get to, because you're not full owner, um, are you able to spend at least some time with your family? Yeah. So that's the whole thing is, uh, because we have, uh, you know, minority, not, you know, not a majority, like 50, 30, 30. Mm -hmm. Um, it allows me to not be, I don't operate any of them. I just, have one role, which is basically growth. So like I'll, I'm in charge of bringing new agents on the team. Um, I'm in charge of getting leads for the construction company. And then I'm in charge of getting new doors for the management company. And basically what I've done, and I, I've just kind of been able to put words to it recently, is I've figured out how to leverage my time. Yeah. Uh, so like when I, I'm basically meeting people, a lot of outbound, a lot of podcasts, a lot of networking, and in doing that, I can get leads for any of these businesses. I don't really have to focus on one or the other. It all is real estate related. So right. if that makes sense, it all kind of, it's yeah. one thing that I focus on. Um, so so I'm, just I'm like basically, a massive lead generation, huh? Yeah, yeah, lead machine. That's awesome, man. Uh, yeah, yeah. So where are you located? You're in Texas, right? Yeah, I'm here in, uh, I live in Round Rock. So Austin, Round Rock, Central Texas area. Is that where you grew up too? I did, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm born in Cleveland. I moved here when I was three years old. And I uh, went to school in Corpus Christi. And then I went to College Station. I got my master's degree in real estate. And then the uh, only thing I've ever done is real estate, really. I mean, I worked a lot of random jobs in high school, like construction. And uh, worked at, like, uh, I worked at Wingstop. Really? And, yeah. <laughs> I, love, I love chicken wings, man. So I, <laughs> I, I, those are my favorite wings. That's funny. So and, uh, did you get yeah. into sales with real estate first? Was that the first uh, path? Yeah. You went down? I, yep. Started as a residential agent as a, at a brokerage in college when I was a sophomore. I was working at a, just a small uh, company called Garandine. And I was just doing residential leasing and sales and always wanted to focus on building a foundation. And, and what I saw in some ways, like learning, learning the basics and learning from the bottom and then trying to build my way up. That's awesome. How long you been doing it now? Been about 11, 11 and a half years. Wow. Yeah, you moved pretty quick getting in, involved with a lot of different business models, but that, that is cool that they tie into each other. Yeah, it what, is. It's pretty special. So what are some struggles you faced, you know, with, with all of those businesses and then having partners with them? 
partnerships are hard, man. So, you know, just keeping everyone on the same page, you try to learn how to communicate like crazy. Right. Um, like my management company, there's four partners. Uh, my construction company, there's six. My brokerage, there's two. So uh, you just learn to communicate, you know, foster those relationships, build them, grow together. My the, That's the biggest thing, maybe the biggest takeaway that people can take is like, I've just always uh, seeked and searched to find the right people. And once you find them, then you feel like you got them. And I call it like foxhole people, like someone you want in your foxhole if you're at war. Yeah. And if you can find those people and you get around them, great. And then just do your best to keep a really good relationship and uh just communicate like crazy um so just you know struggles with uh drama between different partners here and there and Mm -hmm. gotta lay it out on the table and and solve it and and luckily we always have been able to do that is it a struggle too to make sure that you guys are all going in the same direction i mean i know that's what you mean probably by being on the same page but if you want to do a certain type of marketing and your business partner doesn't do you have problems with that no um i mean i would say the biggest thing is like i'm a growth guy so it's a uh, someone kind of has likened it to restaurant business to me before where front of the house and back of the house are always fighting. Um, mm-hmm. So there's that dynamic of me always wanting to grow, grow, grow like, Oh, new property. Let's manage it. Let's do yeah. it. Let's flip, you know, and then operations being like, no, those aren't the type of properties we manage. Right. So that kind of struggle of like, I, I want to take every lead I can get. Yeah. You know, and operations is like, no, it needs to fit in the uh, system. So that's probably one of the big ones is like just inherent differences on philosophies. But for the most part, like we, what it is is with the partners is it's divide and conquer. So like nobody else is focused on growth except me. Mm-hmm. Right. And so no, like as far as like how to grow and marketing strategies, that's all on me. Uh, you know, rent collections is on somebody else. Yeah. And so we, so like, I don't, I don't tell them how to collect the rent. You know, so we just like try to have our lanes and stick in them. That's cool though, because then you work in your strength zone. Exactly. Yeah, that's that's the goal. That's why I did all these partnerships. Is like I could have just had one business and done all of it and owned a hundred percent, but mm-hmm. I'd rather I'd rather not do every aspect and just do what I enjoy and what I think I'm good at. Did you have that idea going into real estate initially, or is that something that just kind of developed over time? It just happened, man, and it, it's really interesting. It, it just happened off, I guess me pursuing what I liked and enjoyed and it just evolved into that. Yeah. I never planned on having multiple businesses. I only thought I would have one and and maybe invest in other businesses and I'm entrepreneurial. So I have ideas and thoughts, but I never thought I would own like parts of a bunch of different businesses. So being that you're entrepreneurial, do you real, do you notice that you have the, the shiny object syndrome sometimes, or you're always wanting to go after stuff that maybe doesn't align with what your future goals are? Sort of, uh, I don't think too bad. I mean, it's all, cause to me it's, it's all real estate, you know, mm-hmm. like I'm not trying to go open a restaurant or, or start a car business or whatever. Right. Um, so it is kind of like, I am intrigued by new things like, you know, lending and title company and stuff like that, but it's all real estate. So I guess it all ties in. Yeah. I mean, it's, I, I put, I guess I put a little bit of a box around it to stay yeah. inside of that box. So what do you think drives entrepreneurs emotionally to do what they do? That's a good question, man. I, I think uh, I, I can only speak for myself. Um, I just know that when I was in college and even in high school, like I just knew that I didn't want somebody to be telling me what to do. Mm-hmm. And that's really what drove me is to, to be my own boss, to dress the way I want, work the way I want, live the way I talk the way I want, all that. Uh, so that's what drove me is to not answer to somebody all the time. I mean, you're always going to answer to, you know, IRS and clients and stuff like that. Right. But, uh, but you're in charge of the me, growth at the end of the day, not someone telling you how you need to do your job. Right. Yeah. So just having free, I just feel like it's, I guess what it would be is freedom. You, you know, entrepreneurs are probably after freedom. Yeah. Now do you, uh, do you invest in real estate as well? Yeah, I do. I've got, um, I think I have like 17 houses and then I've got a 14 unit mobile home park. And then I have a, an eight plex and a triplex. Wow. That's awesome. Um, so did you have any struggles with that this year with COVID and everything going on with the pandemic or rent? Cause I know in a lot of areas, um, 
rentals have been difficult because people stopped paying rent. You can't, you can't evict them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. No, nothing major. Um, my biggest struggle, nothing major as far as rent collection. Like we definitely have, I have people that are like three, four or $5,000 behind, but I was able to, to, uh, you know, keep everything current. Uh, my biggest struggle was I have a, uh, I've got a stock account. I, I, the other, the only other thing that I'm really passionate about is cannabis business. Mm -hmm. And I have a really, uh, for myself, I have a good amount of money invested in the cannabis space. And I also have a line of credit. And so in the middle of the pandemic, my uh, stock account went way down and my line of credit was based on the value of that stock. And so the bank was uh, starting to call, starting to put notes in that, might be ready to call them the line of credit due uh, so that was really scary and i was able to just uh get through and then a month or two later the the stock like rebounded you know it doubled back up like it, it cut in half and then it doubled back up so i was fine yeah but that was a, that was a big one that was scary um always heard don't trust bankers <laughs> and uh i think that's still true for the most part because they'll, yeah. something like that could happen at a moment's yeah, notice. Yeah, no offense to bankers. I mean, they're doing their job. Um, but, you know, it's like kind of, in some ways, it, it did piss me off. Is like you're calling this due in the middle of a, a fucking pandemic, you know? Right. Um, and it's like, that's not right. You know, everyone's struggling, you know. So, but made it through and uh, just keep that in the back of my mind that things like that can happen and try to be smart for the next time. Did you change any strategies because of that situation uh, for running a line of credit through your stock? No, not really. Um, no, I mean, you know, that's the biggest thing is not to get over leverage. And, and I, I wasn't, but I was, I, you know, nobody expected what could have happened with the pandemic sure. and everything. And so I just never realized how quick something could change. Um, so just put that in the back of my mind of being prepared for that. Um, so maybe, maybe, yeah, I guess so. Like maybe a little to be a little bit less leveraged up, but I, I wasn't like, I wasn't like super, super leveraged, but I, I was close to, you know, something bad happening. Right. Um, but I could have, you know, the, the thing, the weird, the thing that sucked about it is like I had assets, I had money to pay that line of credit off. Like they were wanting me to sell my stock when it was down. And I was like, you know, I don't, I definitely don't want to sell when it's down. I have real estate that I can uh, sell to pay this off, but I can't sell it in the next 12 days. Well, that's not, you know? that's how you continue a market crash is just by selling selling it off low it's somebody it, well, you knew it was going to rebound at some point yeah i was buying i was buying more i mean i bought a lot more right um which is which was helpful for when it returned but i, yeah. I mean i think everyone ex anyone that was in stocks you know i guess there's maybe some stocks that were thriving but most of them went you know cut in half yeah i mean even the even the dow jones cut in half pretty much right so on real estate investing um do you think now is a good time to be investing in real estate? And I don't know how your market is. I know where we're at, you know, inter interest rates are low, but there's like a serious lack of inventory. So it's driving the prices up with supply and demand. Yeah. It's super low inventory here. Um, Austin's a, gr I'm drinking the Kool-Aid here. I mm -hmm. think we might be in the best market in the world, uh, you know, in the country as well, maybe, but I mean, you know, yesterday Oracle announced they're moving their headquarters here. Uh, mm -hmm. Four days ago, Elon Musk said he's moving here. Joe Rogan came here. I mean, it's just those are like random things, but there's a massive amount of jobs. Uh, inventory is low, and I just it just depends. I mean, there's so many intricacies, which I, I know you know this, but people yeah. are like, "What area do I buy?" Or, or "How do I do this?" And and I get it, but it's like there's so much more. You got to think about the numbers and the deal. Like you can buy a great house in any, or you can get a great deal in any area. Yep, and in, and in so, any market too any market you know even in a bad market yeah or not a bad market. i mean a, but a hot a market. market that's growing yeah, yeah. i mean a, a market that's shrinking you get a great deal mm -hmm. um and so it's just all about the numbers and you know my biggest thing is to have a long-term mindset i think it's this is my opinion i know it, it could be controversial or people disagree but i think it's it's hard to go wrong uh buying single family homes if you know what you're doing and you have a long-term mindset, like you do the inspections, you know, if you're flipping 15 houses at once, yeah, you can definitely go wrong, but buying a couple houses a year, um, knowing what you're doing, analyzing the market. Uh, I think it's, it's hard to go wrong. And so I just, 
I just try to approach everything with a long-term mindset and, and not get over leveraged on the real estate side. Um, and, you know, it's deal by deal basis. So even if the market's hot in general, you can still find people that are, are needing to sell or there's some equity or, or ways to add value or, or see something that someone doesn't, doesn't see. Hey everyone, sorry to interrupt the show, but I've had a lot of people reach out to me lately and ask what programs I use to run my podcast. Uh, one of them that's super beneficial is Buzzsprout. It's a hosting platform to be able to host your podcast and then be able to produce it and put it onto different sites such as iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, all of those. So if you guys want to check it out, make sure to go to resourcefulagent.com, go to the resources tab, and from there you can find a link that will actually give you, I believe it's a $25 gift card to Amazon. And then there's a lot of other tools and um, resources in there for you if you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or somebody looking to get into business. So thank you guys for listening. Enjoy the rest of the show. All right. Now, I've heard this from a lot of people who are outside of the real estate industry. When they think about getting into real estate investing, they think they need to get a real estate license. What would you say to that? Um, my, this is just my opinion. I think it, I can only say what I've done. It's, I say yeah. get the license uh, because... For me, it, uh, and you can do real estate part-time, but mm -hmm. I wanted to do it full-time. And um, I just see tremendous value in, in being in the game. I say, you know, if you can have staying power to, to have another day in the business, there's always a potential big deal around the corner. Uh, and so when, if you have your license and you're showing people houses, you can, one, make a commission. You can also see opportunities. Like if they yeah. pass on it, maybe you see an opportunity. Uh, so if you're going out and showing 10, 20 houses a weekend, as an agent and you're an investor, there's a lot of value there. Right. Whereas if you're not showing houses, then you're, you're not going to see all those things, but you can do other things. Uh, I just, what's worked for me is to go all in on real estate. So get the license. I, I probably sell like uh, two houses a month, uh, mm -hmm. whether it's a buyer or a listing and, and that's good money, but also uh, really keeps me in the game and makes me a better investor, puts me closer to the market. And so I guess the only thing I would say is if, if you feel like you're passionate about real estate and you feel like it's something that you're like fascinated with, then go all in and get your license. That's my opinion. Yeah, no, I definitely see that. And it's true. I mean, you, I see deals all the time just because I'm, you know, find about, find out about an off market property or you just, there's so many different scenarios, but that does make sense. Yeah. And like I said, you can do it a hundred different ways. You can be a, great investor and have a full-time job, but I can only speak for, for myself and, and what I've seen work. Right. So um, with property management, I know a lot of people who buy rentals long-term, they, they think they're going to spend a lot of money with a property manager. And that might be the case with some. Uh, what's the benefit though of having a property manager management company for your rentals? Yeah, I think the big thing, uh, and like even for me, like I said, I own 30% of that company. Uh, with my properties that I own, I don't think about them. I don't talk about them. I don't hear about them. I don't get any calls and I don't want to. So the biggest thing is uh, saving time. Uh, you also have somebody that's probably a little bit more focused on it. Uh, you know, that maybe knows the laws better. Uh, if you have someone with scale, maybe they get better maintenance pricing. Uh, so those are a couple of the benefits, but the biggest one is the time. Um, you know, most, for the most part, it does take time. You can think it's easy but you get caught in it and you get caught in the drama and it sucks away brain power. Yeah. And so if, if you don't have to spend that brain power and, you know, for the most part, it's relatively cheap. Uh, you know, we charge 7% of the rent. So a thousand bucks, we'll charge $70, you know, 70 times 12. I'm not that quick at math, but whatever that is, uh, if, you, <laughs> if, if you put the, <laughs> if you put that in a yearly term, uh, well, let's just say it's a hunt. Let's just say it's a hundred dollars a month, $1,200 a year. Right. Right. Uh, if, in that example, like, does it make sense for me to never think about my property for $1,200? Probably. If I can go do more deals and, and uh, not get bogged down. Yeah, for sure. Now I've heard some horror stories about property management companies too. So what are some things that you would, you would recommend people like questions to ask or things to look into prior to hiring a property management yeah. company in their area? Meet the team, uh, meet everyone on the team, meet the property manager, meet the owner, meet the leasing agent, meet the, maintenance guy, uh, meet all of them. Cause those are people that are going to be directly touching your property and you want to know that they're, you know, you feel like you can trust them. Right. Uh, that, that's the big one. Um, find, you know, check the references, 
check the reviews, uh, look at your statement, you know, every month just to have a, a, like a quick look. I, you know, I don't, to be honest, I just trust the team, but, um, they're your team too. So it's probably a little different, right? Yeah, that's right. It is. Um, but yeah, I mean, you if you did check the statement, I mean, it'd take, uh, 10, 15 minutes, everything look good. You know, is there something that sticks out? Maybe I should just ask a quick question. Right. So try and stay on top of it. Um, and just find out how, how, like find out how they run their business. Like what do they charge for leasing? What do they charge for renewals? How do they do their leases? Uh, how do they outsource their maintenance? Like stuff like that. And if you ask, you know, if you put a, a little bit of time into it and you ask these questions and get answers that you feel good about it, there's, there's a good chance you're in a good situation. Uh, but it's a hard business. You know, I, I tell people like uh, it, the biggest thing is the time commitment. But like say, for example, you were managing your own property, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, there's, a, there's probably, in my opinion, a 99% chance that I could look over your shoulder and find out things that I could do better, you know, not, not that I'm saying I'm better than you, but I'm saying no, like, yeah. that I could, I could be like, Oh, you paid a hundred dollars for that. I could have found that for 60, right. you know? And so like you have to uh, let go and, and realize that you're saving your time and it's not about micromanaging them because yeah, maybe you could have someone do it for 60, but maybe that person for 60 wouldn't do it right one out of six times and then it's messed up, you know? So there's a lot of uh, moving parts, but the biggest thing is like valuing your time. In my opinion, I see it as a, as a way to scale your business too. So if you wanted to have, you know, cause one or two rental properties is not going to create wealth long-term, right? So if you want to do create massive wealth with rentals, you need to have volume. And how do you have volume? If, uh, <laughs> if you're running around trying to fix yeah. plumbing in or hire people for everything. So I get so many different opinions around this topic. That's why I wanted to bring it up. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, there's a lot of different ways to look at it, but I think you're right. It's all about time and growth. Like some people want to have 10 properties and manage them themselves and, and they can do very well and, yeah. uh, and you have a great life. But if you want to get a thousand, like there's no way you can manage your properties yourself. Sure. Yeah. So what's the vision for the future growth of your business? I mean, each of them, but yeah. Um, my big goal is uh, just get them all firing on all cylinders. Like, you know, I'd like to turn them all into, uh, you know, five to $10 million businesses if possible in the next like uh, five to 10 years. They're, they're all kind of, I'd say they're like, if I had to put a value on them, they're like all like $1 million businesses. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe a little, maybe like one to two. Uh, and then I, one of my goals for next year is to get two properties that will bring in $10,000 a month in income after everything. Right. Um, so ideally like a commercial, like storage or warehouse building. Uh, and I feel pretty good about that. And then uh, one of my other long-term goals is I, I really am fascinated by politics. And so I'm like trying to play a super long game uh, and not really trying to force it or rush it, but just kind of see how things shake out. I always felt led to that. And so you gonna uh, run for president? Estate, <laughs> maybe, man. <laughs> uh, no, but I mean, uh, I was thinking about actually running for city council uh, next year. There's a there's two spots open where I'm at in Round Rock in mm-hmm. May, and somebody asked me to do it, and I was like, man, that's like the little kickstart I needed. I've always wanted to. I've been thinking about it, so. Maybe, yeah. maybe that, and then who knows after that, but um, that's kind of like, what, one thing that's interesting, what I've, what I've always talked about is like, I'm so passionate about real estate, mm-hmm. and what I realize is I'm, I'm actually not. I'm passionate about what it allows. Uh, I'm actually more passionate about like politics and cannabis and, uh, you know, meeting people, and real estate just allows for a lot of that. Right. Yeah. And I, mean, I like, the- li- literally had that revelation. The act of ago. selling real estate is not, it's not fun. It's not like we all come in and go, man, I can't wait to write up another contract today or, you know, do the busy work. But what gets me excited is just the growth of a business, you know, the entrepreneur's side of it. Um, so something else I was going to ask you is, you know, what's something you're not very good at? Not good at. Um, I, uh, not great at systems. Yeah. Like I'm kind of just like, I'll go run my head through walls and uh, systems are something that, I mean, that's why I brought partners on, but, and I know the value of them and I want to get better at them. 
the other thing is probably understanding taxes very well. Mm-hmm. Uh, I feel like I feel like I've uh, gotten screwed over the last couple of years and paid a lot for myself in taxes. And um, that's another one of my goals next year is to like really start digging in to figure out how to be better and utilize, you know, expenses and stuff to, to pay less taxes. Well, that's why we have accountants too, but I guess having that base knowledge is also the benefit of making sure that they're doing things the correct way. Well, that's true. And, and, you know, my understanding, I'm sure every accountant's different, but what I've learned recently, and this is from my perspective, and I have an accountant that's, you know, not cheap, uh, but that they are, you know, essentially doing what we tell them to do. And they're filing these things and they're trying to be safe in a lot of ways. And, you know, some accountants I'm sure will, will skirt the line, you know, I definitely want to do everything above board. Um, but you can have input to give to them that you can see on a daily basis mm-hmm. that can benefit yourself. I mean, at the end of the day, like they're running the paperwork, you know, right. they don't, they do care about you, but they don't care about you as much as you do. Um, and so like having a, a good understanding is, is pretty important in my opinion. Yeah, absolutely. Because I mean, they're human too. So there might, like you just said, there might be input you could give that would affect your business in a positive way. So before we get wrapped up, um, you know, you're not talking to them. Go ahead. Oh, I was just saying, I mean, you're, you're not, you're not talking to them every day, but you're making decisions every day. Right. And so it's important to know, you know, what, what uh, implications you're going to have from what you're, what you're deciding. Yeah, definitely. So before we get wrapped up, do you have any suggestions or tips for anyone listening to this who might be thinking about getting into real estate investing or real estate in general? Just do it, man. Nike, just do it. Um, (laughs) Find some good mentors, you know, find some good people. Uh, Don't overanalyze and overthink and, and, you know, talk about buying multifamily for five years, just go buy something and, realize that it's it's one of many you know and i can only talk about like for people that want to go all in i mean some people do want to buy one a year um but uh yeah i mean there's so many resources man and you know we uh talk to people every day that uh came from nothing or have everything against them you know we have a girl on our team she's black she's a female she's full-time job and uh, Mm -hmm. she quit and now she's just killing it and i know another guy that came here and he was illegal and now he's got like 30 properties. And so, uh, you know, you can, you can't have any excuses. Right. There, there have been people that have done it, uh, that, that came from worse situations than than everybody. And so if that's true, which it is, um, then otherwise you're just complaining, you know? So. um, I love that you said that too. Cause I, there's just, there's a lot of people that hold themselves back because of some, something they create in their head that it's uh that it's going to be too hard for them or it's easier for other people and really at the end of the day it, it's not it's not that bad no it's like i said to, to try and maybe put it in a little more precise is like if anyone has ever come from less than you and made it then they show that it's possible mm-hmm. and regardless it's like nobody's doing anything for anybody so if you're just if you just want to sit and complain that's fine but it's not going to do anything for you. I think too, just to add on to your point is people need to be able be willing to endure a little bit of pain to get to wherever they want to be. If they're not, if they're not comfortable where they're at now, it's not going to just be easy as, you know, snapping your fingers and it's done. You do have to endure some sort of discomfort or change of lifestyle, but the long-term game is far yeah. better for them. And to add on to that, uh, my partner actually, posted something today and it's something we really believe in it's like we we want to be uncomfortable like Mm -hmm. we'll go close a big deal i mean uh we'll we'll make you know we've got these wholesale deals we'll make 100k 100k right and within two days or or two weeks that money's gone and now we're like we got thousand dollars in the bank account you know we're, we're going for broke uh we like having our back against the wall we like having that struggle that's all we do is like we get it in and we put it out and we just keep pushing forward. And you find out when you put yourself in those uncomfortable situations, you, you do figure out how to make it happen. Yeah. Um, if I don't feel uncomfortable for whatever reason, like something feels off to me. I like, I like having 
things kind of chaos. Now, when you say you're, the money's gone, it's probably not gone on dumb shit. It's probably no, gone it's towards invested. something to make more money. Yeah. It's always invested. I mean, uh, you know, both of us, me and my partner, Alex, we both drive Priuses mm-hmm. because we'd rather uh, not have nice cars and we'd rather have more properties for ourselves. We'd rather pay less on gas. Um, so, yeah, it's always invested. We, um, you know, when I, the only time we, uh, we uh, splurge on it, we'll go, if we have a big deal, we'll go buy ourselves some nice steaks have a good steak dinner. Um, but, but we don't, we don't buy fancy things. Um, and not that I think there's anything wrong with that, but for our goals, like we just don't, we're just not interested in that right now. And, and honestly, probably never just because how I am, like, I don't, I mean, I think nice things are cool and everything, but um, I'd rather just do, do other things. Um, Uh, I had a billion dollars. Maybe it's a different story. Probably not, honestly, but, um, I don't know. I have this weird thing where like, I, I'm not a huge for myself. I just feel weird. Uh, if, if I'm like buying something luxury, I just, something feels weird about it to me. Yeah. Uh, and not that I'm cheap. Like I'm not really that cheap. Like I'll go, you know, you know, buy our team dinner or whatever. Like I'll spend money for sure. Uh, but I just, something about it. I, and I think maybe I went to Africa like six years ago and I saw people with nothing and there's something in my mind and I'm not judging people that, that have nice things, but sure. I just don't feel, I don't feel right about, I don't feel right about uh, driving a Ferrari. I'm not judging anyone who does. This is just me. Um, when I know like what some people live like in the rest of the world, it, mm-hmm. it didn't sit well with me. Yeah. I think that's, a lot of people, that's personally, I think a lot of people just take it for granted what we have available to us. I had another guest on my podcast who's from Iraq and just simple things as we use PayPal, right? I'm sure you use PayPal in the past. They don't have anything like that. They don't have like payment things. So if he wanted to create a business online, he doesn't have the same basic products that we might have. And I think we just get, we think that everyone in different countries has exactly what we see around us all the time. And they don't. Yeah, absolutely. Even here though, even here in the U S and you know, there's people here in the U S that don't have things either, but yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Awesome, man. Well, thank you for being on here today. I really appreciate it. Um, of course. If, if people are down in the Austin area and they want to get in touch with you, where, where can they reach out to you? Yeah, man, I'm easy. Um, Type key real estate is our company, uh, for brokerage, uh, long haul construction development for, um, construction, stone oak property management. We've got websites, uh, Instagram. I'm on Facebook, just Matthew Evan type the second, uh, Matt Typekey at Gmail is my email. You're on YouTube um, as well, really, right? Yeah, I got a YouTube channel, Type Key Real Estate. Uh, we'd love to get some subscribers. We're trying to make a big push there. To we've been putting a lot. I mean, we got hundreds of videos, and um, it's interesting, man. Like we we try to just be us and be real. Mm-hmm. Um, I've seen what people do, uh, you know, to get views. Like you have these like like topics, like why is the market going to crash in 2021 or whatever it may be. Like we just don't do that stuff, and. I think it, it um, prevents us from getting a lot of followers, you know, it, it, you, don't, not, you don't have the clickbait titles. <laughs> yeah, we don't. And, um, but we have like, I think close to 600 subscribers. I just, but I just feel, I, you know, not that I uh, judge everything based on that, but I do wish we had more uh, because we put a lot of time into it and we try to provide as much value as we can. Uh, we're just passionate about getting the message out about real estate and how everyone can own it and everyone can do it. And, you know, my mom was a single mom and uh, literally was cleaning houses and now she has like 20 houses. Um, and so I saw how she did that and all the sacrifices and uh, how that changed my life. You know, it, it did help me a lot. Like sh- I was able to see that and understand what's possible. And so we're just passionate about getting that message out there for no selfish reason other than we just love it. We love what we do. Right. Uh, we enjoy meeting people. We enjoy talking about it. And um, it's always something exciting. That's awesome. That's awesome, man. Well, yeah, thank you again for being on. I really appreciate it. Uh, thank thank you. you, everyone, for listening. Uh, the goal of this podcast is to provide solutions and influence others in business, real estate, finances, and personal development. If you have any topics or um, suggestions or any topics you'd like to hear me cover on here, just go ahead and reach out to me at resourcefulagent.com. Thank you, guys. See you on the next one. Did you find what you were looking for? I've got some work to do.